This is by no means extensive. Like, you're not gonna learn how to play the tenor in 10 minutes. Um, but I'm gonna get you started, and you can watch this over and over again and pick up the basic techniques. Hello everybody, I'm Matt Saunders. I'm going to teach you how to play the tin whistle in less than 10 minutes. Alright, so the first thing you need to learn is the basic scale. There's two scales that you're going to use, the D scale and the G scale. A minor, E minor, B minor, there's some common keys, those are related to these scales. So if you know these two scales, you're good to go. Let's get into it. So this is the basic D scale. You're going to start with all fingers closed and you're going to slowly work your way up. get that last note I'm just blowing a little bit harder and then you can keep going up the scale uh, blowing harder into the second octave I wouldn't go much higher than that because you'd probably break a window all right next thing um, the G scale so instead of C sharp being played like this you're just gonna bring these two fingers down and cross finger it like this Now, let's cover some basic ornamentation. So ornamentation is how we decorate tunes in Irish music. Um, I'm going to use uh, the first three notes of a tune called the Bucks of Ormore to demonstrate some different types of variations. So one um, would be to play it straight, just like this. All right, that's fine, but it's a little boring. So uh, something that Matt Malloy does in one of his great recordings um, is he plays um, a slide um, from down below the note. So a slide is just like it sounds, you slide up from the note. Uh, so he goes like this. You hear that? So he's hitting that G before he goes to the A. And you can do that for all sorts of notes. Uh, you can also do it slower, like if you're playing a slow air or something. there I'm just adding a little bit of vibrato, um, which I'm just, um, any note that is not directly below the note that you're playing, you can go up and down and get a little vibrato. And that works for just about every single note. Alright, next thing is the cut. Uh, the cut is where you basically um, pop a finger up and down super fast above the note that you're trying to play. So uh, I'll just start with D and go up the scale. So on and so forth. Um, so yeah, so let's, let's play a cut now in that little phrase. Simple. All right, now the next thing is the tap. Um, this is kind of the same idea as the cut, except for now you're playing a note below, so it should sound something like this. So now if you were to combine them two together, you have a roll. If you combine a cut and a tap, you have a roll. Um, there's two kinds of rolls. There's a short roll and a long roll. It goes like this. Slowly. Now that sounds absolutely ridiculous. Um, don't think of the cuts and the taps and all these grace notes and ornamentation as having like rhythmic value in the tune. It, it accentuates the rhythm but the notes that you're like playing in reality, they're, they're not really notes. They're, they're just interruptions to the main note that you're playing. So it should be played very fast. Um, so I'm just doing this slowly so that you see the movement.
like so. Then a long roll. Any of this ornamentation would generally work, yeah, you could do it for eighth notes or quavers. Generally speaking, uh, you would use it for crotchets and quarter notes and anything longer than that, uh, rhythmically speaking. So short rolls, I would typically use crotchets and quarter notes. Why does the U.S. have to have their own music words? Like, we have, like, there's the metric system, and then the U.S. does its own thing, and then we have crotchets, quavers, and all that, like what I learned when I was over in the University of Limerick in Ireland, but then over here in the States, we call them quarter notes? Anyway. What we got here is a, a long, a long roll. In this case, you're emphasizing that first quaver, that first eighth note of the A, which is a dotted eighth note, a dotted quaver, or I'm sorry, dotted crotchet, and you're then doing the roll, but you're making it longer, so it's a long roll. As opposed to a short roll. Okay, um, I think I've covered all the ornamentation. Wow, that was really fast. Now there's other things called crayons. Um, and trills and things like that. Um, I won't really use that in this tune that I'm about to teach you, but um, they are important and maybe I'll do that in a la later video. Okay, so this tune is called the Clara Reel. A lot of times when people are learning the tin whistle, they start off with um, polkas or slow airs or songs. I'm not gonna give you any of that nonsense. I'm gonna get you up and running with the reel. This is called the Clara Reel. I learned it a long time ago from my first flute teacher, Kevin Crawford. Um, amazing. You should check out his music. Um, a wonderful, delightful man as well. Um, always, always trying to help people out. So I'll play it very slowly with no ornamentation, and then I'll play it again with all the ornamentation in. Um, this first time around, feel free to loop the video back and forth, back and forth to learn the tune. And then once you're ready to start adding the ornamentation, watch the second part. Take in as much as you can. So here it is, played simply, one time around, uh, for you to learn. Now I'm going to play it how I would normally play it. Pay close attention to the different types of ornamentation I'm using. So there's so much more to playing the tin whistle than just what I went over uh, in this video. Um, there's phrasing, there's articulation, there's all these other things, but um, I, I hope that gave you a basic start to how to play the tin whistle and the different techniques that you need to start playing with an Irish style. Thanks so much for watching everybody. If you got any value out of this, um, subscribe, leave a comment, uh, leave a like at the very least. Uh, it actually helps me out a lot and it helps me help you.